So I have spent over one year of my life in Malaysia. I have been to every single state, to every federal territory. And here are seven things that I absolutely love about Malaysia. First of all, the hospitality of the people here. No matter where I went in Malaysia, everywhere I felt really welcomed as a foreigner, as a tourist. And that is something really nice. When you travel to a foreign country and you know nobody there and you are alone as a solo traveler maybe, and then you are welcomed everywhere with friendly smiles, with people asking you, hey, where are you from? What are you doing here? And that is a really, really nice feeling. I'm sure all of us, uh, we can relate to the feeling when we are in a new place and we know nobody and everything is uh, unfamiliar to us. That can be a quite uh, depressing feeling actually. But when you come to Malaysia as a foreigner, at least that's my experience, uh, people will be very welcoming to you. And not only in the tourist area, also in rural Malaysia, especially in rural Malaysia, I have to say, the places where people probably don't see foreign tourists every day, people were always like so welcoming and hey, Apakaba, where are you from? How are you doing? What makes you come to Malaysia? And I can truly say that in my over one year of traveling and living in Malaysia, there wasn't one single bad experience where somebody was rude to me or tried to scam me because I'm a foreigner, tried to overcharge me. Nothing like that ever happened to me. So the hospitality here is something that I absolutely love about the country. And yeah, by the way, I'm currently on a little uh, afternoon walk around my neighborhood. My accommodation is over there. So I'm taking you for a little walk now while we speak about uh, the things that I love about Malaysia. And the next thing is um, the cultural diversity. And I think Malaysia is the most diverse country that I have ever seen, that I have ever traveled to. The cultural diversity of Malaysia makes it a really unique and really interesting travel destination. And that is also something that the Malaysian people, in case you are watching this and you are from Malaysia, you can be really proud of this, that the cultural diversity is so huge here. And it's very rare that you see so many different uh, ethnicities, people from different religions, different cultural backgrounds live peacefully together right next to each other. And that is always something that I like to see wherever I travel. And in Malaysia especially, you find a lot of cultural diversity. A lot of cultures are living peacefully together. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. Ah, hello, hello. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from Germany. Germany. Malaysia. Oh yeah, Malaysia. <laughs> Malaysia, Germany have a Mercedes car. Have a, have a what? German have a Mercedes car and BMW car. Oh, you like the German cars? Yeah. Ah, nice, nice. <laughs> I like the Germany girl. German girl? Yes. Beautiful girls? Yes, beautiful. Ah, nice. <laughs> you like, you want a tea, coffee? Ah, no, thank you, no, thank you. Huh? Bro, you want to ice? No, no, I, no. I, I, I'm walking around. Oh, oh, hello, hello. Hello, girl. Ah, noodles. Oh, makan, makan. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I can make it later. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Ah, see, that is exactly what I was talking about. The hospitality, the friendly people here. And yeah, situations like this basically happen every day as a foreign traveler here. The people are curious. Hey, where are you from? People invite you for coffee or for a drink. So that was a perfect example now of the, the hospitality that I mentioned as the first point. But um, yeah, where was I? The cultural um, diversity in Malaysia. I remember one place in Malaysia in uh, particular. Uh, I was in Johor Bahru, which is the, the southernmost uh, city of Peninsular Malaysia, right on the border to Singapore. And I remember there was a street where there was literally a church, a Chinese temple, a Hindu temple and a mosque all within the same street, literally just a few hundred meters away from each other. And I thought, wow, this street is a perfect example of uh, cultures or different religions living uh, peacefully right next to each other. And that was so nice to see because, yeah, like I said before, I think it's, it's not something that you see in many countries that uh, people from different backgrounds and people from different ethnicities are living uh, peacefully and so close together. And that is something that Malaysia can be really proud of. And then number three, accommodations. Let me explain this point. Uh, as someone who moves around a lot, I'm changing my accommodations a lot, whether it's 
uh, hotels or Airbnbs. I really value the availability of nice, decent, good and affordable accommodations and all around Malaysia I never had a problem of finding some. You always find decent hotels, many of the cities, even some of the smaller cities also have a great availability of Airbnbs, so if you prefer to stay in Airbnbs you will find them, if you prefer to stay in hotels you will find them, there are hostels, guest houses, homestays, everything available all around Malaysia. There wasn't a single town or a single place in Malaysia where I was not able to find the accommodation that I was happy with. And yeah, that makes my life as a traveler, as someone who constantly moves around a lot, way easier. And yeah, as an example, let me show you my current accommodation, which is right over there where I'm currently staying. It is called Damai Residence. And yeah, it's an ideal place to stay, especially for yeah, like short-term stays, maybe just a few months because it gives you your own apartment, hassle-free, fully furnished and all the costs are included so you don't have to pay extra for electricity for example which is really nice when you're just staying short term at one place and yeah what makes this place really nice to stay in my opinion are basically two things the facilities and the community of people over there first of all you can meet people from all around the world you can mingle in the common areas like at the pool table they have a netflix room co-working spaces, a really cool rooftop area from where you can also see the skyline of the KLCC, the Kuala Lumpur city center, a really cool place to hang out. And there are also weekly events that are hosted by the company who rents out the apartments in the building. So it's really easy to meet new people, make new friends when you are staying there. And then the facilities are great. Like I said, uh, you get a fully furnished apartment. They have different types of apartments uh, to choose from. There's always a shared kitchen on each floor and by the way check out my bathroom this is my bathroom with this nice shower bathtub overlooking the city and uh, this is an example of the sunset uh, from my bathroom wow i absolutely love this place and yeah i told you before i'm currently working on my malaysia travel guide ebook and what's really nice for me is that this place also has a well-equipped gym so after a long working day i can work out at the gym uh, after sitting around at the desk all day, it's nice to uh, do some meters on the treadmill, lift some weights. And yeah, there's also a mall right next to the building where I can get food or groceries. And actually the KLCC, the, the city center of Kuala Lumpur is just a short five minute grab away. So the location is really nice as well. And yeah, whenever I show my accommodations in my videos, which you know, I do a lot actually, I do get the question, hey Ken, what's the name of this place? How can we find this place? Where can we find it? And there is always a link to the places that I show in my videos in the description. So also in this case, if you would like to check out Damai Residence, there's a link in the description down below. And then number four, the food. Of course, I also have to mention the food here in this list. The food is as diverse as the culture here in Malaysia. And I guarantee you, you won't get hungry in Malaysia. You will always be able to find good, delicious and affordable food, no matter where in Malaysia you are going to. Whether it's on night market, on small little local restaurants, small little street food stalls or in big malls, there is no food that you cannot find in Malaysia. You can find, for example, Malay food which is halal, you can find Chinese food, Chinese Malaysian food, Indian food, also a lot of Western food, Japanese food, you name it. And yeah, let me share some of my personal favorite dishes in Malaysia, three of my favorite dishes here. First, Chak Rai Tiao, which is a rice noodle dish with thick rice noodles, which is cooked with soy sauce. And usually they add chicken or shrimp to it, but you can also get it with pork, for example, if you go to a Chinese place. And then there's also egg inside, bean sprout. So it's a really delicious dish that you can find all around Malaysia. It's one of the staple dishes here, I would say. And then there is kacang pool, which is also one of my favorite dishes in Malaysia. And it is a dish that is special for the Johor state, which is the southernmost state of Peninsula Malaysia, right on the border to Singapore. And it's not easy to find in other states of Malaysia, but if you have the chance to try kacang pool, give it a go. It's a very hearty dish with beans and with ground meat, with spices. It's almost like a soup. And then they add in fried egg as well. You get a thick, very thick, hearty bread on the side, which you can dip into the bowl. Super delicious dish. And check this out. We have a mosque here. And as you can hear, there are prayers coming from the mosque. 
showing the yeah religious diversity here of course the majority of people in malaysia is uh, muslim so you have mosques all around and here a few times a day you can hear the prayers but yeah like i said earlier you can also find uh, churches i remember when i was in sarawak in borneo malaysia you actually see more churches over there than you see mosques and then you're yeah, almost every city in uh, malaysia also has a chinatown area where you find chinese or buddhist temples you can find hindu temples so this mosque right here uh, is just an example of the cultural diversity here and then number three roti shanai sarung burung or bird nest roti shanai roti shanais are very nice and delicious in general but this type of roti was my favorite because they added minced meat on the top as well as an egg together with some spices also not easy to find not everywhere you can find this dish but if you do find it definitely give it a go and another example of cultural diversity you see there are dogs over there and they don't look like stray dogs so i guess they belong to the house here and we have a mosque here that means that the owner of the dogs it's most likely not muslims because muslims usually don't own dogs so that means that the owner of this house right next to the mosque is not a muslim but still he's living right next to a mosque and probably doesn't have any problem with it and that's yeah this uh, cultural diversity that i was speaking uh, about earlier that people of different cultures different religions just live next to each other and everyone uh, is happy and uh, peaceful with that next point on the list number five it is easy to get around the country and what do i mean with that no matter where you want to go in malaysia um, all the major cities, all the states are really well connected by train, by buses, even by planes. So it's really easy to get from one city to the other. And the buses usually leave on time. They are very affordable. They are really comfortable. So I remember I did a few, quite a few, like five, six, seven hour bus rides all around Malaysia. And it was never a problem for me. They make a few stops here and there where you can buy snacks or use the toilet. The seats are comfortable, so it was never a problem for me. And the same goes with the train rides in Malaysia. If you take a train, for example, from Kuala Lumpur from here to Penang Island, that's like a four hour train ride, cost you only about 80 Malaysian ringgit. So that's around $18 for a very nice train, AC, reserved seat. They leave on time. You can purchase food and drinks on the train usually. So all these journeys around the country are easy, convenient. And I actually enjoyed uh, traveling around the country in buses or trains because yeah, it gives you an opportunity to uh, see something from the country. And Malaysia is a very beautiful country, which uh, leads me to the next point as well. But before I go over to the next point, um, of course, you can also rent motorbikes or cars in Malaysia, which I also did always uh, easy i never had a problem i never had a place that asked me to uh, give my passport as a as a deposit which i always uh, avoid i strongly recommend never give out your passport as a deposit and everywhere in malaysia nobody asked me for a passport as a deposit so very nice and convenient and by the way we have a nice uh, football field here that is always something i like to see huh. i used to play football uh, almost every day when i was younger uh, so seeing football field is always a childhood memory for me but yeah the next point point number six the landscape of malaysia malaysia is an extremely beautiful country and you have everything in malaysia big cities like kuala lumpur beautiful paradise looking like islands with white sand beach crystal clear water interesting mountain sceneries like in cameron highlands huge jungle areas like over in borneo malaysia so the landscape is as diverse as the culture or as the food in malaysia which also makes malaysia a great and interesting uh, country to travel to if you want to spend a holiday in a nice mega city go visit kuala lumpur or johor Bahru, for example if you want to spend a holiday on a nice island go to langkawi kapas island perhentian island if you are looking for some adventures in the jungle, go to Sarawak or Sabah in Borneo, Malaysia. What I'm trying to say is that, uh, yeah, there's literally something for everyone in this country. And that makes the country a great tourist destination. And then last but not least, point number seven, Malaysia is an English speaking country. And that makes traveling as a foreigner who doesn't know the local language that well, really convenient and easy because language barriers almost don't exist. 
everywhere in Malaysia people speak at least enough English to communicate with you. So not only in the big cities or in the tourist areas like Langkawi or Penang Island, even in rural areas, I was always able to uh, find someone who spoke English. So I can't remember one single situation where I was stuck somewhere because I couldn't ask for, for the directions or I couldn't ask for, I don't know, where I can find a restaurant because there was always somebody who spoke English and I had different experiences in other countries before. Countries like Thailand, for example. As soon as you leave the, the tourist areas, most people don't speak English anymore, which um, for me actually is not a big problem because uh, yeah, it can be part of the travel experience in a country. So I never have a problem when uh, I'm somewhere where people don't speak English, but overall in general, it makes the traveling life of course much easier, way more convenient if language barriers basically don't exist. And if you have been to Malaysia as well, or if you are from Malaysia, let me know in the comment section what is your favorite thing about Malaysia. And if you are curious to see my favorite food stall in all of Malaysia, check out the video right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao guys!